Wow, what a difference from yesterday. The ice is gone. Let's go take a closer look. Wow, what a beautiful day. Just to think that yesterday this was all frozen over. What a beautiful sunset. All right, back to Nabu. What's shaking, my Nabooers? So the CPM that runs on the Nabu has been modified. And that is documented inside of their technical specifications, which you can find on nabu.ca in the quiver. And you'll see here that they talk about the below 100. So CPM launches its their applications at 0x100. And anything above that, that's your, um, applica your transient application transient program memory area, and uh, that's where your program loads. So anything below here is how your program can talk to and the CCP can talk to uh, CPM directly. For example, there's something here at 0x05, which are called BDOS commands for CPM. And if we take a look at the list of BDOS commands, you can see here that we have things like writing out to the console and everything, but we also have return version number. So I was thinking to myself, what would happen if I queried the version number of the version of CPM that's on the NABU? So let's take a little look at that. So the first thing we, we can uh, identify here is that it does say that 0005 is the same as a standard CM, uh, CPM entry point, and that um, location six and seven contain a point to base. Now, this was a little bit confusing because inside, like what you do is you populate, um, <clears throat> I, uh, I can't remember what register it is, C, register C, into, uh, into a, you see, put it a value of C. So let's say, for example, we want to query the versions, we put in 12, uh, 12 into C, and then we call 0005, which is called BDOS. And that will do what it needs to do to, to run that particular um, function that we asked for it, okay? So there's a mapping table, memory mapping table related to all these. And then what happens is it'll populate the response in HL, I believe it is, and uh, in the register, and you can take a look at that. So not everything has a response. For example, there's a few functions in here, like right into this console and stuff like that. You can see that there's, there's no return values, okay? So back to what I think is confusing about this, this sentence here, this paragraph, is that it says location six and seven contain a pointer to base. So because every one of these, five, six, eight, et cetera, are listed in this, like in a list, okay, I assume that six and seven originally meant six and seven here, which would be confusing because it's direct to console and get IO byte. But I mean, I don't know, maybe that's what they did. So I was trying to query it and I couldn't get the, uh, the size of, uh, of, the, of the TSA. So the, the transient uh, program, TAP, TPA, I don't know why I keep calling it TSA. Maybe because I fly too much on, the, on airplanes, TSA. So the TPA, the transient program area. So um, this, what this will do is this will tell us how much free RAM is available for programs to run. It also tell us where the iOS which is essentially all of the function calls that you, uh, the, the, it's a BIOS, okay? It's like when you think of Coleco or MSX having a BIOS, which has program APIs that the programmer can use, that is where it all lives, okay? So what I have done is on my um, port to cloud CPM, I just have this function here called ver because I wanted to get the CPM version number. So the question is, two things is, what are we gonna see for memory address space? Um, are we gonna get a version number because it says it is CPM? And also let's uncomment this. So what we wanna see is we just wanna see if we can write out to the console um, using address space nine or, or uh, command nine, BDOS command nine. And BDOS command nine is print string. Okay, so what print string will do is it'll print, uh, you give it a, a memory address and it'll write up until it receives a dollar sign character. Okay, so that's why I'm printing out the word hello there, and I just put a dollar sign. I want it to be different than hello world. <laughs> okay, let's build our project. And now what we have to do is convert the binary file to a pack file. So this is my 
little program for doing that. Um, the segment I've been doing is 1, um, 2, F. And it's not a directory segment. My file name is test.com. Let's see, code and 100. 100, that's the starting address for all CPM programs. Okay, so now what I should be able to do is zap over to our menu here and la la la, that's our program that we're gonna run. Okay, so we got a prompt. Now this is essentially um, a CCP um, for the cloud uh, CPM. So we can, of course, do basic file functions. This is actually over the over the cloud. So these are actually getting the files not on the NABU. These are getting them remotely. But that's irrelevant for this conversation right now because let's take a look and see what version gives us. Okay, so this is quite interesting. So what you can see here is that our CPM um, version is 65535, which is not correct. So the version of CPM that they're running, or at least the compatible hacked version of CPM is not returning an actual version. The memory size, that's the application, that's your, um, your transient program area. So that's how much memory a program has to run, which is 55K. And then finally we have our hello there, which means that obviously our console stuff is working too. So BDOS under CPM on the native NABU iOS is fine. It's just um, missing a few things, specifically the CPM version, but that seems to be the only thing I think it's actually missing. So the, I was trying to think if I was going to, um, and you, you, I guess I'll show this to you first, is we we're weighing the options if I was going to try to reverse engineer and create a new BIOS for the, um, let's see here. Where are we? Yeah, load custom software, cloud CPM. So the question was, is to evaluate this, the current main menu and write it using a completely new CPM for cloud CPM. So I think what I'm gonna end up doing is going the direction of a complete new CPM. So that way I can run uh, CPM3, which is what uh, it's one of the newer CPMs as well, obviously. And I can also, um, don't have to worry about all of that program space for hi historical applications. So all the programs that were originally shipped with the main menu, those can stay in the main menu. Those don't need to be on the new CPM drive, on the cloud drive. So um, yeah, so I think that's what we'll end up doing is, is not trying to because we lose a lot of a lot of memory with um, with using the iOS version, we lose 10k of space just for supporting some old programs that are already accessible through the menu anyway. So anyway, that's enough of my ranting. But isn't that interesting? Um, yeah, CPM version six five five three five.